A fossil discovered by a New South Wales man in the 1990s has been finally identified by expert scientists. Joining me live is one of them, Lachlan Hart, a paleontologist at UNSW and the Australian Museum. Lachlan, really appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much. I understand you've identified a new type of Triassic amphibian. Tell us all about it. What did it look like? How big was it? When and, and where did it live? Yeah, so it's a type of fossil amphibian that we call a temnospondyl. Um, and they became extinct probably about 110 million years ago, but they were really uh, common uh, in Australia during the Triassic period, about 240 million years ago. Um, this particular one we're talking about looked a fair bit like a Chinese giant salamander that we might see today, but it was a lot thicker. Um, it had a much bigger head, had some pretty gnarly teeth, and, uh, yeah, very robust body. And when you say they're robust, I mean, they were very hardy creatures, weren't they? I understand they endured two mass extinction events. How did they manage that? Yeah, so that's a really interesting thing about temnospondyls is that they survived two of Earth's big five mass extinction events, um, including the one that wiped out over 80% of all living things. Um, there are a few theories about why they were great survivors in Earth's history. Uh, one theory is that they just weren't very fussy about what they ate. So generally speaking, when a mass extinction happens, um, predators that uh, specialise in a particular prey item are the ones that go extinct first because that particular prey item has also gone extinct. Uh, so Tempest bundles probably just weren't very fussy about what they were eating. Some of our viewers may remember that this made headlines, didn't it, back in the 90s when it was first discovered. And it sounds like it was pretty lucky that someone actually noticed it. A retired chicken farmer, as I understand it, hosed down the yeah. slab and, and made what is obviously an extraordinary discovery. Yeah, it's a really uh, crazy story. Uh, he was building a retaining wall at his house uh, from rocks that he bought from the local quarry and they turned up this rock and he hosed off the mud and, yeah, this amazing fossil appeared. Uh, and as you're showing on um, there, that yeah, there was a bit of a media frenzy about this fossil when it first came out just because it's so well-preserved and the story about finding it uh, by complete luck is just, it's, it's fantastic. And luckily I understand you had your own background story here. Your parents took you along to see the fossil when you were just 12. Why has it taken you so long to figure out the mystery? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, after it was um, found on the Central Coast, uh, they alerted the people at the Australian Museum. And at the same time, there was this touring exhibition called the Dinosaur World Tour that came from Canada that was showing in Sydney. And so they thought it'd be a good idea to put it on display at this Dinosaur World Tour in Sydney uh, so the public could get a first glimpse of this brand new fossil that was found. Um, and yeah, my parents took me and my younger brother there uh, back in early 97, um, me as a dinosaur obsessed 12 year old, and I would have seen the fossil for the first time then. Um, yeah, and as, as luck would have it, uh, 25, 26 years later, when I'm doing my PhD, uh, it still hadn't been worked on or described. And so when I was looking for PhD projects uh, to work on, um, my supervisor suggested this one and I took it with two hands. And so Lachlan, do you get to, did you get to name this as a new species? And if so, just repeat that name for it and, and tell us the background to, to why you called it that. Yeah, so um, I did get to name it. Uh, it's one of the very lucky, fortunate things we get to do as paleontologists. Uh, so the animal is called Arena Erpaton supernatus. So Arena Erpaton translates from Latin into sand creeper, and that's a uh, reference to the sandstone block which we found it in. Uh, and supernatus means lying on its back because the fossil is preserved uh, belly up like this. Okay, and how rare is it to find a skeleton that actually has the head and the body both attached? I mean, that's the dream, isn't it? Yeah, it's incredibly rare. Most of the time when we're working on fossils, they're isolated scraps, single teeth, or if we're lucky, a couple of vertebrae. Um, this fossil has the head and the spine and most of the ribs, one of the hands, the chest bones. Um, and the other remarkable thing about it is that soft tissue preservation. So that's all that black material you can see in between the ribs there. Um, so we can get a really good idea of how big this animal was when it was alive. So Lachlan, for other 12 year old obsessed, uh, obsessed with dinosaurs, can people go and see it? Is it on display anywhere? Um, it will be on display at the Australian Museum later this year, um, and I can't wait. We can't either. Lachlan Hunt, it's a great story. Really appreciate you sharing it with us. Congratulations. Thank you.